Today's objectives are to identify areas of probability in genetics. We did this in the last tutorial with Punnett squares or a one-factor test cross. Uh, this time we're going to learn how to solve a two-factor test cross and look at those areas of probability within a two-factor test cross. So what is the difference between a Punnett square, what we call a one-factor test cross, versus a two-factor test cross? Uh, on the left here we have a Punnett square. This is a one-factor test cross. We're dealing with one uh, type of gene or one trait. A Punnett square of a two-factor test cross, in this case uh, it's a dihybrid because both uh, sets of parents are hybrid for both uh, genes, uh, differs um, in that it's more complex. We are looking at two different genes here and not just one and uh, we have a lot more variations that can happen. Therefore our test uh, cross here is going to have 16 boxes instead of the typical four that you will find in a Punnett square. When we look at a two-factor test cross we are looking at both parents and the different allele combinations that you can have in each parent we must find all possible gametes that can be made from each parent. Now a gamete is a sex cell in a parent. So if we just make this simple and think of a male and a female. In a male, sperm are our gametes. In a female, eggs are their gametes. So each time we have a gamete, a sperm cell, we must have one of each of these types of alleles here in each gamete. So we have to have one Y and at least one type of R. So we're going to take a look at how to set up a two-factor test cross using this uh, example with uh, these two parents right here. A two-factor test cross is a cross that shows the possible offspring for two traits. All right, in this case, we have color and shape. Uh, more specifically, the two variations of color that we have are our two alleles for color are yellow and green. Two alleles for shape are round and wrinkled. So we will cross a heterozygous individual with a homozygous individual. So their genotypes will be big Y, little y, big R, little r, crossed with big Y, big Y, little r, little r. To set up this two-factor test cross, we can find uh, these possible gamete combinations. Big Y, Big R, Big Y, Little R, Little Y, Big R, Little Y, Little R. Our two-factor test cross has different possible gamete combinations based on our two sets of parents here. We have Big Y, Big R, Big Y, Little R, little y, big r, little y, little r. We're going to arrange these gamete combinations atop of our test cross using a process called FOIL which stands for first, outer, inner, last. So now we're going to set up our two-factor test cross uh, for these uh, two parents over here using FOIL. FOIL once again stands for first, outer, inner, last and what that means is if we look at first, it's the first Y and the first R uh, to make that allele combination big Y, big R, and we're going to put that up top. Our next one is outer, which is the outer Y and the outer R, and then inner, inner Y, inner R, and last is the last Y and the last R. Notice we put those right across the top here. We're going to do the same thing for the next parent. This one's going to be a lot easier because it's going to be the same allelic combination because all we have are big Y's and big R's. So let's just go ahead and do that big Y, big R the whole way down. Our next piece of information that we need to do is we need to fill out the actual test cross. And we do that pretty much the same way as what we do a Punnett square. We're going to look at our Y's and R's and we're going to put them down in the boxes as uh, appropriately fit. So our first box is going to be big Y, big Y, big R, little r. And we're going to continue doing that the whole way uh, through the test cross here. 
Right. This one happens to be that all the columns are the same. Uh, this does not happen in every uh, test cross, so please don't think that's the case. Uh, one thing in the third column here that I should point out is, notice that we have a big Y and a little y. The dominant one should always be first written, then the uh, recessive. Same thing for the next one. If we would follow the same pattern, uh, the little r would actually be first, but because we do have a dominant one, we need to put that one first. So big Y, little y, big R, little r. And then we'll do the last um, column as well. So now we have all pieces of our test cross. What we need to do now is perform an analysis on this test cross. Alright, so now it's time to do our analysis on this two-factor test cross. We can figure out all the information we need by looking at this test cross and basically answering the four questions to the right. And these are our different uh, phenotypes that we would find based on the information on this test cross. So we have all our outcomes here, all our possible outcomes. So how many of the offspring would have yellow seeds and round peas? In order to have yellow seeds and round peas, uh, you would need a capital Y and a capital R. So all these, in light purple, have at least one capital Y and one capital R, and would be yellow seeds and round peas. So there's 8 out of 16, that's 50% of our outcomes would have yellow seeds and round peas. Next up is yellow seeds and wrinkled peas. So this is at least one capital Y and both of the R's need to be lowercase. We have eight outcomes that also fit this scenario. So eight out of sixteen for fifty percent. So that means that our last two green seeds and round peas, green seeds and wrinkled peas would have zero out of sixteen because we have used um, all our possible outcomes in the first two. So when we look at this, we would have a phenotypic ratio of 8 to 8 to 0 to 0, meaning that we have 8 outcomes uh, with the dominant dominant uh, scenario, 8 outcomes with the dominant recessive scenario, and then 0 for the both uh, the dominant um, recessive scenario and the recessive recessive scenario. So now I'm going to throw a two-factor dihybrid test cross at you, and all that the dihybrid means is that both of the parents will be hybrids for both of the genes in this test cross. In this test cross, uh, we're going to use fur color, black and white, and coat texture, rough and smooth. I'm going to ask you to stop this tutorial in random spots uh, so you could practice this on your own just to make sure you're getting the gist of how to do these two-factor test crosses. So in this example, we will cross two heterozygous individuals. So the genotypes will be big B, little b, big R, little r for both parents. Alright, so our possible gametes will be big R, B, big R, big B, little r, little b, big R, and little b, little r. And once again, I want you to use FOIL to fill out the test cross. So go ahead and pause this tutorial now. And I want you to try to set up your own test cross using these two parents. Remember that you're going to use FOIL, first, outer, inner, last. When you're done with that, you can continue to play the tutorial just to make sure that your setup is correct. So if you did the setup properly, it should look something like this. Uh, at this time, you could pause the tutorial again uh, if you haven't already figured out all the outcomes. Um, so just go ahead and pause it. If you already did, you can continue on and check your work. So here is a completed uh, test cross with all the possible outcomes. The next step would be to figure out how many of each of the phenotypes would be shown for each uh, phenotype that is possible. We have black rough coat, black smooth coat, white rough coat, white smooth coat. Uh, as you can see I color coordinated them. Uh, this is probably the hardest part because there's a lot of places where we can mess up. 
So just please make sure that you got the same answer as uh, that has been done here. And you should have got a 9 to 3 to 3 to 1 ratio, meaning that there's 9 black rough coats, 3 black smooth coats, 3 white rough coats, and 1 white smooth coat. Today's objectives were to identify areas of probability in genetics. Uh, same thing with the Punnett square where we figured out the uh, phenotypic outcomes uh, and the chances of each outcome. We did the same thing today in the two-factor test cross. Uh, we learned how to solve a two-factor uh, test cross and basically from the beginning to the end we learned how to set it up using foil, looking at the different parent parental uh, combinations and the gamete combinations and uh, we were able to solve the two-factor test cross. Hopefully this tutorial gave you a little bit of information and a general understanding of how to make a two-factor test cross. Please bring any questions to class. We will be doing a lot of these in class for practice.